Okay, something a little bit different today. Look at this, Serwin Vega. Let's see if we can pop this front cone off. Done a little bit of testing on this one, so I can tell you that, ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, great big 12 inch woofer there. I'll uh, pop that out, we'll have a look at it. It doesn't weigh as much as I thought it would. This one, is a V12S. So that's the back panel. There we go. What can we see here? Not a great deal. I do know that this one has a 150 watt amplifier. Uh, it's got high level inputs, uh, adjustable crossover, phase. Uh, it doesn't seem to have an automatic on off switch. It just powers up when you, power, when you turn it on. And all you get is the green LED. So I've just got an amplifier set up just to give me some speakers, so A speakers and B speakers and we'll go down to our sub which I've got set up through the high level input here, got a frequency generator. So that's working quite nicely. Alright, let's see if we can get some good cone excursion here. Seven hertz. There you go. Got some flutter there, 23 hertz. I'll just turn that up a bit. Okay. 19 hertz. Quite hard to video this unless you're doing it in high speed, but there we go, 15 hertz. So this thing's quite happy at 15 hertz. I'm even getting some puffing there at 12 hertz. Check that out. So, anyway, conclusively proven that this thing works. Yeah, eight hertz. Thirteen hertz is about the lowest you can go on this thing. Pull this apart and we'll have a bit of a look at a play. Alright, we've got the screws out. And this is our 12 inch driver. On the back it says V12S. And you can see inside, got a fully cased a plate amplifier. Apparently it's RMS 150 watts with a peak up to 300 watts, 4 amps, got our ported tube down there and lots of acoustic insulation. I actually thought this speaker would maybe be a, a double magnet, but it's not. It's reasonably heavy, but it's not crazy. Okay, next step, next step take off the plate amplifier and have a look in there. Needed a little bit of a crack to get that off. Okay, right, so the back of the casing is uh, screwed on to the plate amp, so there are four screws here. I'm going to take those off too now. Now I've just got to feel, feel in here with my finger to get the speaker unplugged. And it's all very tight because I don't want to give you any wire for free. Who would want to do that? That would be almost helpful. There we go. And there we go, one plate amplifier. Put this down. Now I've got somewhere to work. Turn this over. Uh, one transformer, which is not particularly meaty. Nothing like the JBL that I, I repaired last year. Uh, I'll 
I might link that in the description because it is that was quite a monster that thing I ended up getting rid of it got a cap there that looks like it's a little bit bulged that's one of the two filter caps might do some research on that I know it's upside down there we go on that particular uh, power transistor there just to see what the power output is of those so the first step I'm just going to clear off all of this crap here no one seems to be able to tell me why they use this stuff but this actually can get conductive with time and it doesn't serve any purpose so I'm just going to pull all this off these caps there look okay so I think they're probably all right the filter caps on the other side on the power supply whilst I don't think they're affecting performance they look to me like they could be the very slightest bit bulged if you can see that on the edge there so I might just pop those off and uh, do a uh, do some capacitance testing and just see if they're in spec righto so I'm not actually sure there's a problem at all so what I've done is I've hooked up the RCA LFE inputs into my phone as a frequency generator I've jury rigged up a cable just from the output of the plate amplifier into this very crappy pioneer carcass subwoofer that was literally a council throw out there we go little crappy 8 inch one it's meant to be driven by a 60 watt amplifier so we'll fire this up and we get power you get a little click when that happens which I don't like and there's no relays in here so I don't know what that is anyway we'll see what happens whoa yeah so let's turn that volume down and we'll play with the frequency a bit So with the Sir and Vega flattens out at about 15 hertz, 20 hertz to give you a realistic base. This one is still functional at 20 hertz, but there's really no response there. Anyway, we've proven that this works. Now I'm going to try this with I'm going to take it out of the low level inputs and try it with the LFE input. Righto, now power this bad boy up. And try it again. Yeah, so it looks like the looks like that's all okay. Now, that all works, so I'll put this back together. I'm going to give it a thorough test because I'm quite fascinated. I've never had a Selwyn Vega sub before. Looks like these retailed in 2004 for about 400 Australian dollars. this thing is reassembled it's been given a clean it actually looks really really nice I'm still a little bit unimpressed with the build quality and the amp the plate amp is a bit cheesy the transformer is pretty small the also the woofer single cone woofer so really so and Vega I thought they were just an awesome awesome brand and maybe they are but to me it's more show than go anyway I've hooked this up to my phone so this is how I've done it the phone, the RCAs from the phone are going into an in input into the back of this old TAC 25 watt per channel amplifier, which I've just repaired and I actually really, really like. So basically that's going to run flat, that's going to run flat, just using some crappy old bookshelf speakers. So if we press play, so what I mean is that both signals, those speakers and the sub are going to get the same RCA input, but only the bookshelf speakers are going to be amplified by the amp. So if you watch this. Like 
So, literally with Stevie Nicks there. Um, so this sounds a little bit drummy, and I'm going to test it against a 10-inch Sansui 80 watt RMS amplifier that's been my home theater amplifier for almost 20 years. So I'll basically back to back these, see how they sound against each other, and see if I keep it or flog it. Right, so let's try this. 90 hertz, that sounds horrible. So 1600, 1.6k, nothing there. 1.7k. So it's quite room shaking there. about two centimeters of a cone excursion there. Yeah, I reckon there's three centimeters of cone excursion. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's at 16 hertz. And it's even causing the paper all the way behind me there to flutter, which is pretty funny. Right, so final thoughts. I did end up testing it on my home theatre system, which is a Denon AVR2805. Beautiful, beautiful amplifier, pre-HDMI. And that's, uh, that's basically a Sirwin Vega uh, sub. No problems. Now I'll go and test it out on my home theatre system. I was getting some really, really bad earth leakage hum into the uh, Sirwin Vega sub that I wasn't getting with my own Sansui SW120 sub. So I've gone back to keeping my own sub and I have sold the Sirwin Vega sub. Sold it for 150 bucks, pretty happy with that. The reality is it's mostly show and not much go. It's It looks fantastic but it doesn't weigh a lot and it seems to be cheaply made and whilst it doesn't distort at high levels, it really doesn't have the punch that you would expect from a 12 inch 300 watt sub.